नमस्कार आई डॉक्टर कपिल शर्मा वर्किंग एज रीडर एट इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मैनेजमेंट स्टडीज देवी अहिला यूनिवर्सिटी इंदौर इन दिस सेशन विल टॉक ऑन एग्जामिनेशन रिफॉर्म्स इन हायर एजुकेशन फ्रेंड्स देर इज नो डाउट ऑन द फैक्ट दैट एग्जामिनेशन इज एन इंटीग्रल पार्ट ऑफ द एंटायर एजुकेशन सिस्टम एंड इट्स बेसिक ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू एंश्योर मिनिमम लेवल ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ कंसेप्ट एंड इट्स एप्लीकेशन अमंग स्टूडेंट्स but unfortunately today it is lost somewhere in the over emphasis of marks and grades the present day examination system instead of assessing the students qualities like conceptual clarity independent thinking problem solving ability etc it is reduced to evaluating the capacity of a student to store as it lacks objectivity reliability and validity ideally examination system should act as a catalyst in making the learning activity very interesting but unfortunately it has become a nightmare for the students at all levels well ever since formal education system has come into existence educationists have widely differed on their opinion on the very existence of examination system itself some argue that there should be no examination system at all while others favor it those against the examination system view it as a hindrance in the natural ability of learning of a student as it is largely based upon testing the memory of a student not his ability to apply the knowledge and create new ideas finland and japan are an example of this ideology both the student countries are not very examination pro and take less number of exams especially in schooling as compared to other countries those in favor of the examination system argue that it helps students and teachers alike with the help of examination they are able to identify their weaknesses and accordingly take corrective actions moreover it helps in differentiating students based upon their performance further they argue that examination system has existed since ancient times and has delivered good results doing away with it will not do any good to the education but it is to be noted that there is a vast difference between the current day examination system and the one which existed in ancient india another point of disagreement is the frequency of examination and that is if examinations are there to exist when and at what interval the exam should be conducted friends keeping in view the importance of reforms of examination system university grants commission new delhi has developed an action plan for academic and administrative reforms where one of the focus area is reforms in examination system although number of committees were constituted in past also to suggest reforms in the examination system but their recommendations had very little effect due to the powerful resistance towards the change in existing examination system examinations are usually associated with anxiety and stress for both the students and the parents the high stakes associated with passing the examinations have led to increase in malpractices which have adversely affected the its capability thus there is a dire necessity for serious and highly focused efforts to analyze the root cause of problems in the examination system in our country although it is practically very difficult to implement reforms in examination system in our country with so many diverse universities but keeping in view the larger interest it should be undertaken at the earliest now let me take some time to highlight upon some new approaches in the that have developed with the period of time with respect to examination system a major shift today is focus from capacity to retain predetermined knowledge level received by the student 
to a more dynamic, participative and even creation of new knowledge by the students. In this era of information age, focus is more on capacity building, continuous learning, originality, creativity, skill development and value inculcation. Further, it is argued that an institute needs to define the objectives of the education first and then adopt a suitable examination method to achieve the desired outcome. A number of educationists consider education as a tool to control quality of education and to obtain feedback for both students and teachers. In many developed nations, specially designed tests which have a diagnostic orientation are used to assess learners need and then accordingly plan teaching pedagogy and material for the students. They also use specially designed tests to study the effectiveness of methods, material and technological inputs etc. This helps in creation of innovative pedagogical methods which are used to measure a large number of developments in the students overall personality. Now, I will briefly go through some issues existing in our examination system. I presume that you all are well aware of them and so I will not get into detailed discussion for them. Some of the prominent problems faced in managing examination system are usually learning outcomes are not defined creating grey area hence question paper setter may bring in his own perception leaving objectivity behind. It is a hard fact that delivery standards are different and hence for the same syllabus one examination may not be able to capture the actual understanding. Institutes have large number of students and affiliated colleges which lack skilled manpower. Quality of question papers has always been a great concern for academicians. Paper leakages, rescheduling of examination, exams are a very common nowadays. Mistakes in question papers, use of unfair means by students and lack of competent faculty members for evaluation further aggravate the problem. Above all, delay in the declaration of results makes things more worse. Now I will focus on recommendations, measures that are required for the examination system to make it more robust and in line with the international standards. For better understanding, I have broadly classified these measures into four categories. Academic recommendations, financial recommendations, infrastructural recommendations and other recommendations. First, I will discuss academic measures and to start with Universities and academic institutes should focus on regularizing the examination schedule. Irregularity in examination schedule is one of the major problems faced by both students and universities. Academic calendar of universities should be strictly adhered to. If examinations are not taking place on time, students end up losing their valuable time, money and in many cases opportunities too. If conduction of examinations and declaration of results are done as per schedule, it will help students in their career mobility and academic progression. The second step that should be taken up is making appropriate changes in the syllabus regularly. A good syllabus positively affects the quality of examination and that of the course. Any syllabus should do away with overemphasis on theory or practical. There should be a balanced mix of the two. While developing the syllabus, emphasis should be laid on understanding knowledge acquisition, skills and values. However, in western countries, suitable testing mechanisms have been developed to test even subjects like theory, ethics, etc. which are predominantly considered to be theory driven. Syllabus should focus on imparting conceptual clarity of the subject as it leads to developing capacity to articulate. Any amount of knowledge is useless if it cannot be expressed properly. Hence, 
it is very essential that syllabus should have uh, components which help in developing students ability to clearly express his thoughts. Otherwise, the true essence of knowledge will either be lost or misunderstood, which can prove to be extremely harmful at times. The next measure is introducing semester system at all levels. It is very important step towards moving examination system into a very focused manner. Semester system focuses on continuous interaction between teachers and students, thereby leading to regular face-to-face -face assessment of the student. Annual system of examination is not student oriented as it generalizes the diversified needs of the students due to which while conducting examination students demographics are never taken into consideration. Each and every student is different and Generalized examination papers do not do justice with their diversified knowledge and skills. Hence, introduction of semester system is the best as it allows a teacher to assess students' performance on an individual basis continuously. However, semester system requires a high number of faculty to student ratio. It is the need of our that along with semester system, choice based credit system should be introduced in its true spirit. CBCS aims to have a clear vision of what one has to learn. Every student has different learning and understanding capacity and a single mode of assessment for all cannot judge it. The area of learning should not be bound by the number of subjects. CBCS opposes the system of standard time to complete a particular course. It advocates a maximum time to complete a particular course but no minimum time. It gives a student opportunity to select different credits for a particular duration so that the learning is in accordance to the choice and pace of the student. CBCS gives full autonomy and lays accountability on faculty to decide upon evaluation methods for his or her course. Centralized assessment is against the spirit of semester system and CBCS. Faculty member who has taught a particular course or a subject should have the right to design the mode of assessment for the students depending upon their learning capabilities. However, many educationists opine that this would waste too much powers in the hands of individual faculty and may lead to victimization of students. For getting best results of semester system and CBCS, it is essential to introduce comprehensive continuous assessment. Hence, another measure that would help in improving examination system is adopting comprehensive continuous assessment. Universities should do away with their annual system of assessing the students. CCA looks at the students overall capabilities in the form of regular assessments which is a mix of various evaluation tools such as tests, quizzes, presentations, assignments, group exercises etc. This allows the students to constantly and consistently demonstrate their level of knowledge and identify areas where improvement is required. Further. It allows teacher to evaluate the effectiveness of their teaching strategies and modify them so as to include remedial activities for students who are not performing as per the expectations. Grading is the essence of semester system and CBCS. Grading minimizes misclassification of students on the basis of marks. Further, it helps in eliminating unhealthy competition amongst high achievers thereby reducing societal pressures and providing the learner with a more flexibility to understand things as per his own requirements. Further, grading facilitates joyful and stress-free learning. Hence, universities should do away with their current system of marking and adopt grading system. Friends, a major problem faced by universities today is students complain related to unfair evaluation of their answer sheets. In order to overcome this, universities should upload model answers of question papers. 
evaluators should be given model answers so that evaluation can be done as per standard system followed for all students. After the evaluation is done, scanned answer sheets should be sent to the students for their inspection. This will help them to know their shortcomings and also put up their objections in case of any mistakes in evaluation. The next important measure is balanced components of examination. There is no consensus amongst academicians on the components and their weightages in any examination. However, most of the academicians advocate a balanced approach, opining that a certain portion of the question paper should be objective type so as to check the conceptual correctness of a student as it provides reliability, objectivity and validity. However, it takes lots of time in preparing a test and wild guesses by the students may lead to distorted results. The question paper should have sufficient number of questions to check students skill to elaborate his language proficiency, his ability to summarize, analyze and interpret. But here standardization of answer cannot be done which will result to subjective marking. Further. Examination paper should contain some questions to test the practical aspect of knowledge gained by the student. Questions should be designed in such a way so as to measure the ability to apply knowledge for practical purposes in life. Here, it should be noted that weightages of each component however should be decided keeping in mind the purpose of the examination. Like in medical sciences, the weightages of practical component should be more and the standard of passing the practical examination should also be very high. Another aspect is declaration of results of students. Academic circles have always been divided over the issue of result declaration. Whether students results should be declared publicly or it should be communicated to them in confidentiality. There is no single opinion on this. Many psychologists advocate communicating results only to the student as it leads to decrease in the unnecessary competition and prevents weaker students from developing a sense of inferiority complex. However, in Indian context, the performance of a student is declared publicly. The argument behind it is that society must know the result of all the students as it reflects transparency in this system. System should give an opinion option to student to opt for whether he or she wants his or her result to be declared publicly or not. However, the examination of sports and practical should be made publicly. Similarly, results of competitive examinations should also be made public. A student should have prior knowledge of the policy if the results are being made public. Apart from taking academic measures, institutions need to upgrade their infrastructure too. Use of technology in examination system will definitely minimize human intervention and promise excellent result. An integrated examination management system will help in smoothening various steps in examination processes such as student registration to issuance of hall tickets, secure generation of question paper, secure delivery of question paper answer sheets, OMR and barcode technology for answer booklets, digital scanning of answer sheets and digital issuance of mark sheets, result processing and publication online application and revaluation, dematting of degrees and certificates. In order to host their IT solutions, universities are required to build dedicated data centers. Universities desirous to set up data centers which initially can host up their applications at dedicated data centers established by number of universities like IGNU, Gujarat Technical University etc. Further, universities should implement 
latest technology for security measures. It is recommended to have dedicated secured building for the purpose of carrying out examination work. Biometric access control should be used to have access to the examination building where confidential examination work is being carried out. Closed circuit television security systems, they can help in continuously scanning the examination building or premises or computer center or result processing center. This will help in having timely and accurate record of presence of individuals who should not have been there. In order to implement reforms in examination system, universities will require large investment for developing state of art infrastructure. Many universities lack finances which are required to put the measures discussed. Thus, central and state governments should provide financial support or grants to the needy universities so as to enable them to bring necessary forms in their examination system. Moreover, it was observed that many faculty and staff members do not wish to take examination related work as the compensation involved in examination work is not motivating for them. This hampers the examination work. Hence, it is suggested that universities should adequately monetarily and non-monetarily compensate people involved in examination work. This will motivate people to take examination related work more seriously and frequently. Apart from academic infrastructure and financial measures, there are some other measures that needs to be taken up to improve the examination system in our higher education. Like setting up of a commission for examination reforms. MHRD should set up a commission for examination reforms in higher education. The commission should be interested with the job of reviewing the status of examination process and recommend changes accordingly. It should be given the task of developing an integrated mechanism for examination within a stipulated time frame. The commission should also be asked to conduct specific capacity building programs for people involved in examination process. Another important measure is training and recruitment of employees as discussed earlier that universities suffer from shortages of trained and skilled manpower who can manage their examination system. Hence, it is necessary to take adequate measures to handle this problem. Especially, training programs should be conducted for existing employees who are involved in managing examination. These training programs should be aimed at enhancing their skills with respect to newer technologies being used in examination process. Further, universities should take time to recruit full-time employees who are technically strong and have prior experience of handling examination work. Friends, in the end, I will conclude by saying that examination is undoubtedly a very important aspect of our education system. Unfortunately, the current system fails to achieve its goal. Reforms in examination system are the need of the hour. Measures discussed in this session will help in improving the examination system in our country. There are divergent opinion about the nature of examination reforms, but all agree that reforms are required. Further, there is no disagreement that examination should aim at testing level of knowledge, skills and values in a student. Use of technology, adoption of semester system and CBCS, etc. are some of the measures which are tested and tried not only in Western countries but many Indian universities too. MHRD and UGC should take a holistic view on the above issue and constitute a commission for examination reforms to address various issues relating to examination system in higher education in our country. With this, I conclude this session and hope that you will find it fruitful. Dhanyavad and Jai Hind.